In July 2017, human rights campaigners lost their legal challenge against the British government's sale of arms to Saudi Arabia. The campaign against the arms trade claimed the government was acting unlawfully by selling arms to Saudi. They pointed to widespread concerns about Saudi Arabia's brutal war against Yemen. However, the judges rejected any claims of wrongdoing. The campaign claimed the Saudi-led coalition was guilty of repeated and serious breaches of international humanitarian law and created a catastrophe, destroying vital infrastructure and leaving 80% of the population in need of aid. Since March 2015, Saudi has waged its brutal war on Yemen in an attempt to crush the popular Houthi and Sarula movement and reinstall the former president, Abd Rabu Mansur Hadi, a staunch ally of Riyadh. Some members of the public have attacked the government for allegedly burying a report into the funding of terrorism in the UK, which focused on Saudi Arabia. Prime Minister Theresa May has repeatedly backed the Saudi regime and insists that maintaining close ties is good for the UK's security and economy. International organisations, including a UN panel of experts, the European Parliament and humanitarian groups, have also condemned the continuing airstrikes against Yemen as unlawful. Human rights activists and ordinary people who follow these affairs alleged the Saudi forces deliberately target civilians. Why is the UK selling arms to the Saudi Kingdom? And should the United Kingdom distance itself from that regime instead? Simple questions with important answers. The UK High Court recently decided that it was legally permissible for the United Kingdom to sell arms to Saudi Arabia, despite global concern over the use of these weapons against civilians in Yemen. We asked the public for their reaction to that verdict. Well, I think probably they're saying that because it's such a large um, amount of money that they get in, in uh, spending on defence or sales that um, they probably just had to say that because uh, that was the reason, I think. Yeah. I don't think they might, they might not believe it, but. I don't believe the UK should be selling any weapons um, to anyone, to be honest. Um, we should be at the state where we should be spreading peace around the globe. I think that's, uh, I think that's very bad because uh, it'll uh, cause uh, more uh, death and destruction in the Middle East and it'll make the Middle East more unstable. Yes, I think it's unfortunate because by selling arms, we are killing our own fellow human beings. Everybody has a right to live. So selling arms doesn't make any sense at all. You don't eat arms. All you use arms for is to kill human beings. Everybody has a right. We're all born by accident. We don't have a choice of our parents. So why should we be subject to all these arms sales? It's unfortunate. If you go to a shop and buy a knife, and I don't know, do something bad to someone who works in that shop with that knife, you, you can't say that the shopping centre supplied that to stab their staff with when that was your idea. That's one thing you have to look at. I'm all for objective thoughts and criticisms rather than that, you know. The hypocrites, they shouldn't be selling arms to people who are indiscriminately killing, killing other people for no valid reason. As far as I know, Yemen's not attacking Saudi Arabia, so why would they be supporting someone to commit open aggression against its neighbour. I think it's a poor one, you know. Uh, obviously, legally there's nothing, but morally, it just shouldn't happen. That's basically it. Um, I'm very disappointed with the court decision uh, with regards to this uh, particular issue of Saudi Arabia. Um, it is clear from the body of evidence that is actually mounting with regards to the targeting of civilians that has gone on in Yemen uh, from Saudi Arabia. We've also um, heard evidence of, in the control centres, um, British personnel being involved um, when um, planes, drones, etc. have been uh, sent out to make the strikes in Yemen and where hospitals have been targeted, where schools have actually been targeted. So there is a whole body of evidence that is mounting. So it defies a reality that the judiciary in this country has actually um, looked at this evidence and uh, considered this evidence properly 
and all the atrocities that have been that have been committed as a result of the arms sales that are going to Saudi Arabia from the UK. And uh, it is also, considering the amount of evidence that is there, it is also very clear that uh, the judiciary has been lent on by the political establishment and it seems that the political establishment um, has used all the influence that it can muster to make sure the judiciary does not block um, a revenue stream uh, for the government. And this is again very disappointing that this has gone on in this uh, particular way. And uh, I think something needs to be done, but it is clear that what we've also had is the legalization of murder in Yemen um, by the British authorities by allowing these arms sales to continue to Saudi Arabia. Um, yes, it's an absolutely shocking dis uh, decision for a High Court judge in England to be saying that it's okay to sell arms to Saudi Arabia who are clearly, by anyone's reckoning and from many reports, using those arms to commit war crimes over in Yemen, in the war in Yemen. Two out of every three people who die in that war are civilians. 600 children every month are now dying of cholera, as the United Nations say is a direct result of the war where Saudi Arabian untrained pilots are dropping bombs um, sporadically all over schools, hospitals and civilian buildings. It's absolutely disgraceful. But of course, the real reason the British government allows Saudi Arabia to get away with it is it takes up two to six billion every year in arms sales, as well as the deals we get from Saudi's oil in return. So it'll carry on, but it's disgraceful. I think it's also disgraceful how the media here are turning a blind eye to this war. The UK has licensed over £3 billion worth of arms to the Saudi regime since they started bombing Yemen in 2015. Why is the UK selling arms to the Saudi Kingdom and is it justified? We put that to the public. No, definitely not. No. Um, I think Yemen's probably defenceless, really, and uh, it's, it's unfair, really, I think. Um, no. We shouldn't be selling any weapons there and that's killing, that can kill anyone. Uh, if, if we're selling anything with the capacity to, to endanger um, hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, even a single life, a single life is sacred. Um, we, shouldn't, we should be trying to d deter this, if anything. Right, but then that sort of situation of abuses and wars is, going, is happening all over the world. So I don't honestly see that particularly Saudi Arabia is worse than anybody else. It, no, it's not. There is no point in going to a third world country, people are already suffering, to go and cause this unfortunate suffering to women, children and adults. It's a disgrace to this country which I love and I think they should not have done what they are doing now. No, it's not. Where, 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 are, where is the money going to be spent? It needs to be spent in our country with NHS and helping improve our environment and the people in this country saw so many, so many homeless, Islamophobia and all this sort of thing. We have to get our, our systems right for every, every person living in this country. Simple, it's people who've got arms manufacturers in their constituency, they want to keep it going, they don't want unemployment, but it's, a, it's just a ridiculous price to pay for, for what is happening, you know. And it's until that's sorted out, it, it's going to remain. Uh, yeah. With regards to the arms sales that are going on to Saudi Arabia, um, Britain is in no position to be able to justify um, the arms sales in terms of what is going on in Yemen. Um, it is clear that either the weapons that go to Saudi Arabia are being used to put down um, any kind of uh, civil um, kind of action or any kind of protests uh, against uh, the oppression of the government. So some of the arms that are going, the arms sales that are actually going to Saudi Arabia are either being used for that purpose or um, they are being used to actually oppress uh, the people in Yemen um, in particular and the way that um, uh, that violence is being committed is, is um, being well documented. Um, in terms of the reasons for Britain doing it, it seems also that with Brexit approaching, uh, there is also the question of money, there is also the question of the revenue stream, and Britain wants to keep its options open with regards to that. So it's 
as simple and as naked as that because there isn't any uh, other justification that one can actually find uh, for this to be taking place despite all the atrocities that are being committed. Well, yes, selling arms to the Saudi Kingdom, as we've said, you know, it's, it's a large, massive chunk. It's about two billion every year. And, and Britain is only second to America in the amount of arms they sell Saudi Arabia. So the clear reason is it helps our economy. It's, the, it, it's worth billions of, in money, uh, you know. And so that's the reason why um, England is still selling um, arms to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is constantly condemned by human rights groups for breaking international laws and for carrying out human rights abuses, yet the UK maintains strong ties with that regime. Does the public think the UK should distance itself from the Saudi regime and why? Yeah, well, I mean, if they believe that they're um, committing uh, human rights things, then they should distance themselves, yeah. But, but I don't think they are, are they? Um, I don't think um, our government should distance themselves from them. Maybe just open up communications to s diplomats, um, MPs, just discuss with them what else can be done. They can, there's always other ways in order to operate. You don't have to do something just because you want to profit or just because you want to sell something. Yes, I think uh, any country that uh, causes uh, turmoil in the Middle East, the, it, Britain should distance itself from. So um, uh, anything that causes trouble in the Middle East, you have to break the links. So, Yes, I think so. If Britain, America, France and Germany were to you know, serve a relationship with Saudi Arabia, they would stop all these unfortunate incidents. It's not a democracy. Everybody knows it. And it's unfortunate that this country, America and others who call themselves a democratic country, allow such injustice and inhumane acts to be perpetrated to unfortunate people. They deserve a right like all of us. Ask the Saudi people what they want to happen and ask the British people what they want to happen and say, OK, those two governments want to do that. Let them go and fight each other and kill each other then. And then we'll hear what they say after they killed each other. Don't bring none of us into it. Don't bring the people into it. But then why do the people allow it to happen? I think, I think, no, we shouldn't distance ourselves, we should try and come together, um, basically that's it. I think the human rights organisations um, are not actually, uh, I would argue, not doing enough uh, to actually highlight the problems that are going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I think there are a whole series of uh, violations that are taking place uh, that require uh, that a lot more is actually highlighted about what is going on in Yemen. Um, it is one of the poorest countries uh, in the world and certainly the poorest in the region. Um, uh, the kind of level of oppression in terms of the blockade that's been made of, uh, of Yemen, uh, in terms of the problems, that are, medical problems, you know, cholera outbreaks, various other things that have actually gone on in, in Yemen are quite heartbreaking. Um, and the level of uh, problems that are there, it is disappointing um, to actually see that actually human rights organizations need to be reflecting that in the level of information that they are giving out uh, to media outlets, in the level of information and the level of resources that, are put it, that they are putting in uh, to this particular issue and trying to find out what's actually uh, going on and highlighting all the detail of what's actually going on. And I think uh, we need to understand that um, th this is something that, again, uh, Saudi pressure is being put on various agencies, various uh, mainstream uh, human rights organizations, so that the level of oppression that is taking place is not being reflected in the a level of output and the level of um, um, you know, highlighting of the issues that needs to be done. Well, yes, of course, the um, British government should be distancing themselves from the Saudi regime. As we've said, they're carrying out war crimes daily in Yemen, bombing schools and hospitals and buildings with civilians in. Two out of every three people killed in the Yemeni war are civilians. And as I've said, you know, 600 children every month are dying from cholera as a direct result now of that war. So for them, it's duplicitous. And one point I'd like to make is I'd love to ask the British media why they're turning a blind eye to the war in Yemen. 
Uh, you know, we hear so much about Donald Trump and the Pope tweeting and carrying on talking about Charlie Gard, this young baby, that should, whether he should be kept alive. What about the 600 children in Yemen who are dying of cholera because as a direct, direct result of the, of, the, of the Saudi bombings? Three statistics sum up the situation. First, over three billion pounds worth of military equipment was licensed to the Saudi Kingdom since the Yemen conflict began, including aircraft, drones, grenades and missiles. Second, according to the UN, over 10,000 people have been killed as a result of the war. Thirdly, the Saudi attacks day and night on men, women and children have displaced over 3 million people. Here's a very simple question. Why is Saudi able to get away with breaking international laws? We asked the public. I think it's probably got the wealth they've got, the oil they've got. Um, and the, and the relationship they've had with Britain for so long, um, and probably the, the rest of the Western world, America, they're allowed to get away with it, I think. I think it's because uh, Saudi Arabia is, uh, uh, is they, they do what the West wants, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they're really controlled by the West in one or the other way, I think. Oh, it's simple because there's nothing like democracy in America. What we have in America is called unadulterated capitalism. They wanted money, they wanted oil, anything they do, they want to sell it. And what do they do? Why do Americans sell now? Arms, bombs. So that's the only product they can sell. Well, because of the oil, because they got a lot of, lot of things to, and believing that through war they are going to win. That's not the answer. Listen, right? It seems to be that whichever government you want to talk about can get away with what it wants towards its people. That's the way it seems. So when you say it like that, okay, that may very well be true, and they may very well have breached many human rights and whatever and whatnot, but the fact remains is governments do what they want anyway. Greed. Greed of politicians and industrialists here who are just playing greedy, just want more and more money and don't give a damn about the effect on other people's lives. Uh, because they've got a lot of oil. They're very wealthy, they buy arms, they buy other things as well. And uh, it, the thing is, it's got worse. Well, no, perhaps it's not got worse because also with the internet, this is a lot more apparent than it used to be years ago uh, when it was all happening anyway. Um, Saudi Arabia is able to um, break international laws because uh, the West, Western governments, the Western establishment, uh, the main players want uh, the kind of agenda that Saudi Arabia is actually promoting uh, within the region in terms of sectarian agenda that is actually being promoted and the way that it's going about it. So in order for the people in Saudi Arabia in terms of Saudi establishment to actually stay in power, um, this is a price that they um, uh, need to pay. And it's mutually beneficial for the Saudi establishment and for the Western establishment because they want Saudi Arabia to promote, one, the sectarian agenda. And we need to understand that uh, Saudi Arabia has never um, uh, been able to plan and think strategically. The strategy is not actually made within Saudi Arabia. Beyond their own luxury and comforts, the Saudi establishment doesn't really think about what it needs to do. The planning and so on uh, is left to the Western governments, the UK, the US, etc. And Saudi Arabia simply implements it. Um, they might put their own little quirks and uh, uh, the level of um, abuse uh, that they will carry out. But in essence, uh, all of that is actually done from there. So it's because Saudi Arabia has the green light um, from key Western governments that we have uh, this going on and, and the fact that Saudi Arabia doesn't actually stop what it is doing. Well, as we've said, Saudi Arabia is now a big ally of, of Britain and America because of the oil that they sell the Americans and they sell us and because of the uh, alternative trade deal with, we sell with them with arms. They're such a massive arms trade. So they're allowed to get away with it because we turn a blind eye. But also because effectively Saudi Arabia is um, an ally of Israel uh, and it's fighting uh, the war against an, um, Israel's so-called enemies, Iran and, 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 and Hezbollah. So they're, uh, they're seen as friends of America and um, Britain.
What steps does the public think the UK should be taking to make Saudi Arabia comply with international law? I think they should take a, a, um, a multilateral uh, um, stance along with other countries, uh, Western countries, to, uh, to force Saudi Arabia to, to look at their human rights. And because uh, it is blatantly obvious that some of the, it is quite bad. Um, just peaceful speaks. Um, maybe, maybe we can have like some sort of education. Um, we can have like in, international students come come over here and learn our culture. We go over there, learn from their culture. Well, I think they should really call their heads, those in power, speak to them and tell them what they are doing is unconscionable. After all, if they all believe that we are all human beings and we believe in God they should disassociate themselves. For even people who call themselves uh, that they believe in God, Allah or Christ, it's unfortunate. I think the UK should, as I said, um, take a moral stand and start condemning these countries. And in doing so, at least they put themselves in a better light, but they can't play it both ways, condemn people and then also arm them. It's just hypocritical. We need to have a more open hand. We need to stop playing games. Uh, stop following America and we need to have closer ties, we need to have a better understanding and, and that way once you have a better understanding the, the other side reciprocate so it, you know, it, it's a growing together. You're never going to change anything by condemning or, or embargoes or what have you. The arms should stop. I, I don't know how the hell you stop that because it's a matter of economics and as we see every day economics overrules everything else. So. I don't know how you stop it, but it should. I think in terms of trying to get Saudi Arabia to um, implement international law, uh, the West's policies uh, themselves need to, be question and, uh, need to be questioned and come under scrutiny that, um, they, that they stop promoting the kind of agenda, um, that they, the sectarian agenda that they want, uh, that they are promoting at the moment, and they make sure that Saudi Arabia stops getting the arms. One, for internal oppression, for putting down protests for anyone who is, has any kind, of, um, any kind of dissident, that they put them down and uh, act very harshly and brutally with, that, with those individuals. And also, uh, in order for them to stop invading other countries and to attacking other countries, infrastructures and so on and so forth, and putting down uh, protests and any kind of uh, ideas of self-determination, um, uh, to be squashed. So all of those things need to be actually uh, considered in terms of what Saudi Arabia uh, is doing. Um, and also I think one of the things that needs to happen in the, is that people, uh, the Western public, uh, needs to be more aware of what is going on uh, in its names and the oppression that is going on. Um, and people need to be questioning their MPs, need to be challenging the government as to why Saudi Arabia still continues um, to get arms from that are manufactured in the UK, which kill people and target children, uh, hospitals, schools, etc. Why is that allowed to continue? Well, um, yes, it's always I, there could, of course, Saudi Arabia, just as every other country on the, on the in the world, should comply with all humane laws coming out of the United Nations. If, if we don't, uh, if we turn a blind eye simply so we can make money from arms whilst children are being uh, slaughtered, it's, um, it's a, just a disgraceful, immoral act from the British government. Following repeated calls by international bodies for the UK to stop supplying the regime, in May 2017, evidence was found that British manufactured cluster munitions had been used by Saudi Arabia in villages in northern Yemen. At the time, the British government rejected this evidence. UK Defence Secretary Michael Fallon finally admitted Saudi Arabia said it had used them, but he claimed it would not do so again. Sadly, even over 10,000 deaths, many of them civilians, have not been enough to cause a change of heart in the UK government, leading to a moral tragedy measured in graves for the innocent in a forgotten war against an abandoned people.